Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to the Tribe of the Tides, where in the last episode, Kareem and Dewdrop were finally able to start their family together in this very prosperous land. They had one son so far, and she will be giving birth on the very next turn to her second baby, and I'm thinking just based on their lifespans right now, they'll probably be able to have a third before they um, pass away. Actually, it's kind of ironic because Dewdrop now has less on his life than um, Kareem does. And the healing fruits are very powerful, but they won't be able to um, reverse time. So unfortunately, in four days, Dewdrop is going to pass away just due to old age. Kareem still has six days left on her life, which is why I think we'll be able to get one more baby out of her. And once they have their third child, we will name them all together, so all three of them, the little children, can be named at once. But now, not only do we have this healing fruit that Diamond found next to um, the nest, but we also have the second one way back here that um, Dewdrop managed to discover while he was wandering through the grass. So this place is very, very lucky. I feel like this is probably the luckiest location on the entire island right now, much more so than um, the water tribe even, with all of their berries, or the traditionalists over here, who managed to find um, yet another wandering creature in the last episode too. So they are feeling very, very fortunate at the moment, and I think I'm probably going to um, keep this little border of grass around their territory. They will expand it a little bit more because of course Pearl wants to um, go fishing pretty soon with her fishing tail, but I will um, kind of just try to keep this area a little bit more secluded so that they can become like the hidden little healer's glade or something along those lines. So if anyone gets particularly hurt or sick in the future, they could come to the healer Glade to try to help themselves. At the moment, the only sick creature that we really have is Echo, who is um, the current leader of the water side of the pack, though he's not really doing much leading right now. He's kind of sick of just a broken heart, I feel. He only has four days left of his life too, so he's going to be passing away on the very same day as Dewdrop, which is really ironic. Um, he's been spending his final days out here with his um, daughter Marina, though, though I feel like at the end of this day, once um, the sun rises again, he might tell her that it's time for her to move on and uh, take control of the pack. So Marina will be taking over this side of the island, while Vankir over here, our little ultimate collector, our um, god of the harvest, is probably going to be moving on very soon. I just want him to leave us with one baby so that we can still have a nimble-fingered creature on this side of the island. I mean, we definitely need one to collect from all of these berry bushes anyway, but he's probably going to um, just search through all of these tide pools with um, Wave over here. Wave is going to be his guard. They're going to see what they can find in this big wide world, and maybe, maybe they'll end up with the uh, traditionalist because I feel like they would definitely be very, very impressed with him in particular. Now, the traditionalist did have a bit of a shocker in the last episode too when this little baby was born back here, and I do want to change his name over to um, Pine to go with his father's name too, Birch. But he has the spiky body. Of all things, he managed to inherit the spiky body in his genetics. And I feel like these guys might find that as a little bit of a bad omen. I mean, they were kind of suspicious of Anara anyway because of her water body. They weren't really sure what she was. They had never seen a creature with a water body in general because, um, I don't think anyone over here knew Echo. So they found her very, very suspicious, and now she's given them this strange, spiky-bodied baby. So it's very likely that they're going to try to oust her from the pack. For now, we'll move her um, right over here so she can be next to her baby. And um, honey, I believe you've collected all of your berries. She is our only other creature with the nimble fingers right now, so she's kind of on berry duty. And then of course we have Cease over here who is um, currently making her way over to the side of the island too because she's feeling a little bit neglected at the moment. She's not exactly enjoying her brother's presence. Her brother Nuku is the king of the island right now, technically, the king of carnivores at least. And he just had a very huge surprise when he stumbled back to his nest only to find that his very first child has this beak, this gorgeous gorgeous, adorable little beak. I don't think he is too impressed with that though. I think he would find that very, very shocking and it is quite likely that he would just um, ignore him altogether. I feel like they are probably going to try to push this guy out of the nest just because he's so strange and they don't know what to make of him. But for now, we might actually be done with our turns. It looks like we are. We just have, of course, Cinder way back here with one of his turns. So why don't you actually peek in this grass for us? 
And then I believe, um, Riptide, um, you could at least knock down some more acorns to collect in the next turn. And then let's see, we have, um, Isla over here too. Now, Misty is kind of like the nest mother at the moment. She's the one who's watching over all of the babies that are born in the nest. So that means that Shark will be, um, perfectly safe if Isla goes back to Z Cinder. But I feel like she might actually stick around because she probably wants to have Shark come, uh, meet his father too. So why don't we move her right over here so that, um, hopefully they can move together in the next turn. And then we can have her pick this berry for now too, this little shriveled up berry. And then I think we are officially done with this turn. So let's go back here to see what this next little baby is going to look like because I am very, very excited to see that. Let's see, what is your second baby going to be? Oh my goodness, look at this little guy. It's another male too, and of course he inherited um, his father's no paw, which is a little bit unfortunate, but he is adorable. Doesn't he actually look like, um, almost like a throwback to one of the very first sons of Adam and Eve? I think so, I remember that ginger hair and those panda patterns, so that's really cool. That is really cool. So let's just um, take a quick look to see, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, this is terrible. Echo and Marina, you have been ambushed back here by a carnivore. This is not good. Okay, luckily they both have um, claws, so they should be able to take care of this one, but this is definitely some really bad timing. So Echo, why don't you come over here and oh my goodness, really? You managed to find a healing fruit of your own? Oh my gosh, that means that we could heal him. We could heal him, but we have this carnivore to deal with too. Oh my gosh, this is a strange situation here. What should we do? Should we slap the carnivore or should we have him heal himself? I mean, at the very least, he could show this to the rest of the pack so that if somebody else gets sick in the future, they could use it too. So this could kind of be like his last selfless act as a king if um, he doesn't make it through this battle. But for now, why don't you use your two turns to at least hit this carnivore? And then let's see, we have nine days left on the carnivore. So Marina, could you actually take the carnivore out? I think you could. Look at that, they managed to take it out together. Oh, that is so perfect. And that means on the next turn, we could actually have Echo heal himself with this healing fruit. How perfect is that that they managed to find that out here? That is such a stroke of luck too. So it is very, very far away from the healer's glade. So this will definitely be just um, the water tribe's own personal little medicine to use. That is great though. So I feel like that would definitely make him a little bit happier. It would ease his heart a little bit at least because he has definitely been hurting these past couple of days. But let's see, can Shark come over next to his mother? I believe he can, so if we move him, um, I guess we can move him a little bit further away, right? We could actually have Isla move right here just so that we know he'll be safe. And then he can scoot all the way over here with his two running legs. He is a very fast little land shark, isn't he? Um, we can have Isla pick the berries for now. These berry bushes are very, very full because, of course, we don't have uh, many creatures who can pick from them. And then Cinder, you can come over here and meet your uh, son for the very first time. So this is his first time seeing his little son because I believe he was uh, protecting the territory when um, Isla gave birth. And I'm sure he is very, very pleased because um, he has the gills, which makes him very valuable to this pack in particular. So for now, why don't you go ahead and pick one of these berries too? And then Riptide back here, you need to uh, pick up your acorns. There we go, we'll have him pick up all of his acorns. I would like him to have a family too, but I'm not quite sure who he's going to breed with just yet. Um, for now though, he is just on acorn duty so that we can collect our food. And then um, Misty, unfortunately nobody's giving birth right now. Like I don't think anyone is having babies at the moment, so you're kind of out of luck. You don't have any babies to watch over. She is a very, very motherly caring creature, I feel like, and she has seven days left on her life, so she should be able to see some more babies born pretty soon, especially as Vankir is just about to grow up. He's, um, he should be fully grown in one day, so if we move him over here, then um, maybe he could have a baby with Marina. I wonder if he could have a baby with Marina if we move him like right over here instead, between the berry bushes, in fact. That is a very good spot for him anyway. That way she'll be close enough to um, come over here and hopefully breed with him in the uh, next turn. And um, Echo can stay over here, of course, and munch on his little healing fruit. So, Cove, let's see, why don't you continue clearing out this grass for now, because that's what you were doing before. We might as well just clear it out so um, we don't have any carnivore situations in the future. And then Wave, um, you should probably actually scoot up here because you are technically the guard of Vankir, aren't you? He's waiting very patiently for their journey to begin. But I think that's it for this side of the pack, so let's move over here instead and uh, see what this little baby looks like. Oh my gosh, look at those big ears. Those are huge. They're almost tickling your mother's 
Christian. So let's name him Scratch in reference to um that big claw, of course. And because he is a carnivore after all, he's going to um use those big ears to hopefully lure some bunnies over to where he is. Um, let's see, Kirtavan, why don't you actually peek at this cactus right here so that we know it's there? And then why don't we have, um, this little baby? I feel like they probably would not have given him a name either since they're kind of ignoring him at the moment. They're kind of shoving him away, especially as these other babies are born that are, um, a little bit more normal in their eyes. So we'll have our little build baby come over here just so that, um, he's protected. You can spend a little bit of time with, um, Kirtavan right here on the shore. And instead we'll have, um, Summer come over here to breed again with Nuku, and then they can pick their berries for now, or at least she can, because she is the one who munches on the berries, while Nuku watches out for the bunnies, because they do seem to be lured over here by our little um, berry traps. So at least he managed to catch one of the bunnies. Um, we could actually move Kirtavan right over here so that he could um, see in a little bit more of this darkness, though unfortunately that did not light up the bunny burrow, so I'm not sure if there's a bunny there just yet. But um, cease. It seems like Honey has definitely spotted you by now, so why don't you scoot up this way to um come get to know her? And in fact, you two could come over here and try to get this crabbit too if you wanted to. I mean, I know the traditionalists aren't really interested in crabbit me, but um you could bring your own ways to this tribe, and she would definitely be interested in eating a little bit of meat. So we'll have Honey pick the berry bush, and then we could actually have Birch come down here so that he could help cease. Um, with the crabbit, she could slap him from this side, and then Birch can actually slap him from this side, and that was just enough too to take him out. So this is your very first taste, I believe, of crabbit meat, right, Birch? And I just noticed that these guys look so similar, don't they? I mean, Cease almost looks like she could just blend right into this pack with her tiger stripes and her white fur, so I feel like they would probably accept her with open arms, especially once they hear that she is very, very interested in the ways of Animeme. Um, I know that they would take that lore to heart. They do follow the ways of Adam and Eve, but that is a very, very special part of their lore too. Now these two, unfortunately, I do believe that Honey would tell them to pack up and leave because she is not too impressed with this some um, strange omen that they've given them. And look at that poor Pine. Poor Pine only has one in speed, so he can only move one space at a time. That is going to be really hard for him. And in fact, Anara is going to have to stick very close by him just so that he doesn't get taken away by the bird. Though I don't see the bird in the skies yet, so we could have her scoot a little bit further ahead if we wanted to. For now, she'll just peek in some of this grass while they're moving along, um, just to make sure that nothing is going to come out and ambush them as they leave, but they are on their way out. They're going to um, move along the shore and try to find a different place to live, I guess, because they are not welcome here anymore. And it's a little bit sad because this was her original home. We found her right here by this nest, and now they're just kind of kicking her out of her own place. But, um, Komiko, you're going to go over here and clear out this grass for your son, because we do want Cloud to sit himself by this tree right here so that he can also collect the acorns. Of course, then there's another bunny! Oh my goodness, but I don't think we have anyone who can catch it, because of course Komiko only has one turn left, so instead we'll have her, um, clear out the grass because it's a little bit more important right now. And then I think, um, they're done on this side of the pack too, so it looks like we can skip the day again. Oh, wait a second, we forgot about these guys back here! Oh my goodness! That is not good, we can't forget about you guys! In fact, what we want to do is have um, Kareem breed with Dewdrop again right away so that um, they have enough time to have their third and final baby. So I think I'll have um, Ilair actually move over here just to protect the little babies that are right by the nest. And then we'll have Kareem move over here to breed with Dewdrop and then scoot right back to her babies because she wants to spend as much time with them as possible, of course. She is very, very grateful that she's um, even been able to have their children. Now, Dewdrop, on the other hand, is going to help Pearl clear out this grass by the water so that she could possibly do a little bit of fishing. She is learning the ways of fishing from Dewdrop, even though he didn't really fish himself in the water pack. He just kind of knows the uh, art of the trade, I guess. He knows the ways of fishing from uh, all of the other creatures in his pack. So on the next turn, we'll have her kind of settle down by the water and try to find some sort of fish to um, tackle on her own. She should definitely start a family as well because um, she does have an amazing fishing tail. She's the only creature on the island with a fishing tail, so it's very important that she also has a little family. And I think, um, Taronu, we're actually going to have you come back this way to hopefully clear out this tree over here and chase your bunnies again. Oh, great. Where is that bunny going to lead you? Of course, Taronu is 
is the one who kind of just charges off blindly after bunnies. That's how he found this place. He um, started way over here in the swamplands and he chased bunnies all the way over to where Eilir and Jasper were making their home. So we'll see where he ends up this time. And um, I guess Eilir, you could actually clear out um, this way a little bit and that should be the um, last turn that we can make on the island. So we'll go ahead and skip the day again. I don't believe anyone is giving birth on this turn because nobody's in the nest. So we'll just skip and make sure that nobody is getting attacked by carnivores instead. Um, so far, so good. I don't think anyone is getting attacked, so it seems like we're okay. But Echo, this means that you can finally, finally eat this fruit. Oh my gosh. So he would have passed away in two days, but since we're going to have him eat this fruit right here, he now has five days left on his life. How cool is that? So we'll have him peek at this um, little fruit right here, and then we'll also have him pick up the carnivore meat. And then he's going to send Marina away to um, the rest of the pack so that she can tell them the good news, of course and um, so that she can also take on the pack for herself because that is still probably going to happen. She will become the next leader of the water babies. Um, she can only get this far, unfortunately. So Vankir, you're going to have to go the rest of the way. You'll have to um, come over here and breed with her and then you can officially get started on your own little journey. So we'll have him start moving um, toward the rest of the sands over here. And look at that, he can already pick up one of these shells. That was the whole point of this mission after all, to find shells for them to collect. And um, Wave, why don't you actually light up the way a little bit. You could come down here to light up this sand and then Misty could actually sit over here to light up the rest of the sand in this area. And then little shark. Oh my gosh, isn't he the most adorable little thing? I absolutely love him. He looks so majestic too with his antlers. Let's change his gem over to him blue. And then we'll have him um, actually pick from the berry bush. We might as well. His first little contribution to the pack. And then his parents can go ahead and pick from this one, which is going to take a little bit longer since um, they only have one running leg each. Now, Riptide, I believe you just have a few more of these acorns to collect for us, and then you could actually sit over here so that you could help us out with the berry situation as well. This is why we need those nimble fingers. This is why it was very important that Van Keer could give us um, at least one baby to keep on this side of the island, because they have so many berry bushes to collect from. It would be such a waste if we didn't let him have at least one baby. Now look at you. Oh my goodness, our little duck-billed creature is actually um, growing up. So he has two gems now. We'll change this other one over to orange and then we actually want um, Summer to sit in the nest. So Scratch, you could sit over here and then we'll have Summer sit um, right in the nest for us and munch on her berries, of course, as usual. But I wonder how um, the brothers are going to react. Like again, I don't feel like he even has a name yet because they aren't really paying much attention to this guy. So maybe they would have a bit of a rivalry together. But the king for now is going to um, sit back on his throne, I think. We'll have him sit right here so that he can light up all of these bunnies. Oh my goodness, we have so many bunnies. Um, Kirtavan, maybe you should actually go after them now. We'll have him scoot this way. There's the bunny. Okay, so he could actually pounce on this one and then grab it for us. And then on the next turn, he'll be able to um, gather up the meat. And then we have this pair over here. Oh, poor Pine, you can still only move one space at a time. That is going to be so hard for you to get around. Um, again, we don't have the bird in our skies, but I am very, very concerned about moving his mother too far away from him, especially with um, this pack right here, because they don't really like him very much. They think he's a very bad omen, so I would hate to leave him um, right next to these creatures. But we're going to move him as far as he can possibly go, which is just one step. Like, I'm not sure at this point if she would even stick with him. Anara, like, I know she loves her baby, but he can only move one step at a time. She might actually try to scout ahead a little bit at least. And I see that bunny back there going back to its burrow. Hello, little guy. Unfortunately, we can't catch you right now, but I have my eye on you. Yeah, we'll have Anara kind of scout ahead and um, run into all of these bunnies for us. And then hopefully once he grows his um, extra gems, he'll be able to keep up with her a little bit better. But for now, we'll have Honey pick her berries as they watch very suspiciously as this little baby lingers around their territory. And then Birch, you could come over here to light up the nests because um, we don't want any carnivores spawning in there. And I suppose Cease could actually come up here too because um, she is our strongest pack member on this side of the island right now. So she is actually quite important. I'm sure they're very happy to have her over here. Um, Cloud, why don't you go ahead and pick up some food for us? You could at least peek in this grass right here. And then we can have Komiko come over this way and find another bunny. Okay, you were munching away at this berry bush, weren't you? Let's have uh, Kamiko peek at the berry bush. And then I don't think that bunny is coming back out, is it? It has completely run away. Wait a second. There's another berry bush over here? 
Oh, this is the one that it was picking clean. Okay, I see what's going on here. So Kamiko, you could at least um, peek in this grass too, and then we'll have to clear out this whole area. Like this is why I want to clear this out because typically it seems like there's quite a few resources by these different trees. So it's pretty um, useful to clear out these areas. And in fact, that's another thing that I wanted to do way back here. Um, we definitely want to clear out this tree that Tironu is going toward. And I think there are a ton of bunnies over here too. At least I hope so. I hope these are just bunnies. Um, let's see, Diamond is fully grown. Look at you. You are looking very regal on top of your throne. Um, we probably want him to stay there for now just to light up the area because it's very helpful. But Ailair, you could actually come over here and help out your brother. Um, at the very least, you guys could play Leapfrog on the next turn. Yep, those are bunnies. Those are definitely bunnies. So they're getting closer to this little tree over here. I definitely want to include this in their territory. But we are, again, just going to try to keep that um, border of grass around them so that they feel a little bit more secluded than the rest of the tribes. Now we're going to have to scoot you guys around. We want, of course, the little baby to sit over over here so that his mother can sit in the nest instead. And I wonder if they're going to have a little daughter as their very last baby. I wonder, are they going to have three sons? I mean, despite the fact that um, Dewdrop and Kareem both have very similar genetics, their two babies look very, very different. I mean, we have one with a cracker jaw, we have one with um, just the normal nose, and it looks like um, their genetics are actually pretty good aside from that no paw. Like um, this one right here with a cracker jaw has normal eyes and normal blood clotting too, so that is very, very good to see. But um, let's see, we want Pearl to come over here somewhere. Like if she could actually sit herself over here instead, then she would have a lot of little fish to pick up, wouldn't she? So we'll bring Pearl over here to sit by the water side. And I wonder actually, like are these even alive anymore? Because they are certainly not moving. So maybe we could have her get just a little bit closer to investigate. Oh my goodness, and there's a nest over here too. That's excellent. Okay, so we have two nests in the area, which means that we can have um, more babies born in the pack at once. That's always a good thing. But um, Dewdrop, for now, why don't you actually um, sit over here so that you're closer to your family because you only have two days left of your life. So I would definitely like you to um, sit over here so that you can meet your children. Now, why don't we have this little baby help out by sitting over here next to this berry bush? There we go. And then I believe that is officially all of the turns that we can make. So let's see what our newest little babies are going to look like. We have um, Summer giving birth on this turn and we also have, of course, Kareem giving birth. So let's zoom in on her so we can see her baby first. Their very last baby. Baby. Oh my gosh, it's almost a twin of the first one. Look at that, he just has the antlers instead. Oh my goodness, and someone else has come out to us see the baby too. Hello there. You picked the wrong person to sit next to though because Pearl is going to shatter you. Um, at the very least, she's going to do quite a bit of damage and she should probably be able to whittle him down so that somebody else can take care of him completely. Let's go ahead and hit him three times. Okay, maybe that's enough. She did actually shatter you, Carnivore. Very, very good. So why don't we have Diamond climb off of his throne so he can come over here and uh, pick up the meat for us there. There we go. But now we have three little babies, three little baby boys that we can name. So let's figure out what we're going to name each of these children. The first one we'll name Wayward, which was a suggestion made by one of you in the previous episodes to kind of signify the um, struggle that Dewdrop and Kareem had in the beginning when they felt like they had to run away from Echo to start their family. So Wayward will be the first son, and then this little one right here I would like to name Hope, and their very final baby will be named Zen. So we have Wayward, Hope and Zen as their three babies. And I think those are a very good trio of names that kind of all fit together in regards to their story. Now let's have Kareem scoot over to this side of her children and then Dewdrop can stay right here because this is his very final day. This is going to be his very final day to spend with his family and I don't want him moving away from them. They're all going to stay together and um, let him pass peacefully. Now Tironu and Ailair, you were going to try to clear out this tree. So let's have Ailair jump over here to play leapfrog with um, her brother. And look at all of that rustling grass. Oh my gosh. Are those really all bunnies? Let's see. Let's have Tironu go in here. Oh yes, those are all bunnies. This is perfect for you. This is heaven. You must love this. Um, Ailair, you should probably peek in some of this grass so that hopefully Tironu can snag one of them because he is just going to go charging off into the grass if um, he doesn't have a way to pounce on them. Yeah, I think we're going to have to wait until the bunnies come out to um, the clear tiles so that he can really pounce. But for now, he's just going to do him a wait right by that tree. And now let's go over to the water side of the pack where Echo 
is feeling just fine. Now he has four days left of his life too. So why don't you go ahead and clear out some of this um, grass for us? And then your daughter is going to make her way to the rest of the pack to um, share the good news. Share the news of not only the healing fruit that they found, but also the fact that she will be taking on this pack. She will become their next leader. So she can take on the gems now. She has a blue orange and green as her gems and then I think um we'll just plop her straight down in the nest so I would like to hopefully put the water body in here for her baby let's see the water body yeah we'll put that in the 30% slot because she does have it in her genetics so I'm hoping that's going to allow it to get pulled out for her baby and the other thing that I wanted to add in here was um the nimble fingers of course so this baby is guaranteed to have one berry paw because his father has two but if we place it in the mutation menu then there is a possibility that um it could have two as well because that was actually how Van Keer got his two nimble fingers anyway his mother Misty did not have the nimble fingers on her so the mutation menu took care of the rest and he became our ultimate collector but he can take on his final gem and then we'll actually have him pick up this shell right here and start making his way down the shore because it is time for him to make his journey now so wave um you are our guard so you might as well light up the way um go through all of these crabbits over here and make sure that your brother has a very safe path over to um these shores where Kirtavan is currently watching very suspiciously in the middle of all these shells that he can't even collect, unfortunately. You can at least pick up the uh, rabbit meat for us and then sit over here so that you can hopefully see any little bunnies that come hopping out of that burrow. And oh my goodness, look at you. Look at you, you are absolutely adorable. I love the color of her ram horns too. Again, unfortunately, she did inherit the no paw from her mother. So it would be a good thing if we could hopefully get um, the double claws back in their line as soon as possible. But let's name her Needle to go along with her brother's name as well. So we have Scratch and we have Needle. And then we have this um, technically unnamed baby who despite um, the fact that most of his family doesn't really want him around is still hoping and sticking around the territory as much as he can. So maybe he'll actually um, scoot over here and help his mother pick her berries because he does know about her um, berry munching habits despite the fact that she is very very confused about him and she's not too sure of him she wants him around. So she'll pick a couple of berries too and then this little bunny back here is definitely picking our berries. I saw him munching away at our trap. So if he would just get a little bit closer then we could actually have um, Nuku go down there and try to grab him. For now, I mean, there's not really many other creatures who could jump over there in time, so we might as well just leave that bunny right there. And um, Anara, let's see, your little baby can move at least one extra step, but it's really not that much. I mean, it's not enough for him to catch up with you. I don't want her to leave him behind, but I'm starting to wonder if that's exactly what she would do, if she would abandon him here out by the ocean because she needs to find food and shelter herself. So she's going to start making her way up this way. She will keep um, an eye behind her to see if he can catch up, but otherwise she's just going to um, light up the way and grab this bunny if she can. Oh, wait a second. She she can't because she doesn't even have any strength on her so that's another reason why she really needs to find a place to settle down because she can't even protect herself. Um, thankfully Pine can because he does have a claw so if anything came out to get him then he should be able to um, defend himself at the very least and since he has a second gem he doesn't have to worry about the bird picking him up and taking him away either. But for now um, honey pick your berries again and are there any shells for you to collect over here? Um, it doesn't look like it just yet. So she's going to move over here so that she doesn't have to um, see this baby of course. He's moving away now so she's not too concerned about him um, causing a ruckus in their territory. And then Cloud you could come over here to um, pick up all of these acorns so there is a leech in the water over on this side so we do have to be careful of that because we don't want cloud um getting that leech illness either so cease why don't you actually go in here to expand the territory a little bit for us and then um birch can do the same oh no he's sick Oh, poor Birch, you caught the common cold. I wonder if he's upset too. I mean, he did just watch his own son get completely banished from the pack, so he must be particularly upset. Maybe he'll actually go out there and try to help Pine. Maybe he'll follow him in secret once he has a little bit more energy. But it looks like um, Shark has another gem. Oh my goodness, you are growing up too. Look at you, you are growing so fast. Oh my goodness, so he could actually go in the water too because of course he has those gills. So maybe he would um, go this way to find a bunny. Okay, that's even better. There we go. So we could have um, your father come over here to collect the meat that you just caught and I'm sure he's very, very proud of you. I'm sure he's very proud. Um, Isla can go ahead and grab up the berries. I guess the bunny was probably looking after these berries. So these guys are kind 
kind of using the carnivores method without even knowing it. I'm sure they wouldn't have any way of knowing that the carnivores are using their berry bushes as traps too. Now River, you could at least pick from these. And then I think we might be just about done with this turn. Um, at the very least, we could have Misty come over here to help you pick up the berries. Though she wants to stay very close by because, of course, Marina is going to be giving birth on the next turn. So I'm sure she wants to see um, exactly what that baby is going to be like too. Now, Cove, you have just a couple little pieces of grass to look after. Um, this one, unfortunately, has a cactus in it, but at least we know it's there. And at least this entire area is cleared out now, so hopefully we won't have any carnivores spawning in there as long as we keep it lit up. And I think that might actually be it for this turn. So let's see what this little baby is going to look like. Hopefully it'll have the water body. This is going to be um, the only baby that Van Keer is going to leave behind on the water side of the island. So let's see. Fingers crossed it has the water body. Oh my goodness. I think he does. I think he actually has the water body, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Look at this guy. He is so cute too. And of course he has his father's nimble fingers and he also managed to inherit his mother's um, claws. So I think he is a very, very fitting prince. Let's go ahead and see his model too if we can find it down here. There he is. How handsome is he? I mean, he is going to be quite the help for the pack because not only will he be able to um, pick up all of these berries that we have lying around the pack, but he can also pick up the shells in the water. And for that matter, he could even do a tiny little bit of fishing. Um, he doesn't have the fishing tail, of course, because Pearl is the only one with the um, fishing tail way on the other side of the island. But he is still a very, very fitting little prince. I feel like with his pale fur and his pale mane, maybe um, Breeze would be a good name for him? Breeze, there we go, kind of like a sea breeze almost. So we have Breeze, the little prince, and we also have a bunny over here, hello. So the carnivores are eating well. Let's have um, Kirtivan pounce on this bunny and grab it up straight away. There we go, you pinned it right underneath you. And then look at that, it looks like Scratch has grown um, his second gem too. So I'm starting to feel like the uh, siblings might start ganging up on this guy because he looks very, very different from the rest of his family. So maybe Scratch would actually push our little build baby right out of the territory. He would send him packing straight to the sands where he thinks he belongs. So we'll have um, this little build baby move down here where in fact Inara is currently heading. So maybe they will meet up over here. I mean, she's probably feeling very, very upset with herself because she had to basically abandon her baby off in the ocean by itself. So she ran across this baby instead. I mean, he's almost fully grown. He's almost fully grown, so he's a little bit older than her child was, but I feel like she would find a little bit of comfort in him, especially because they're both so strange. They were both kind of ousted from their packs just based on their looks. She with um, her water body and him with his um, very, very unique looking bill. So we'll have to keep an eye on them for sure. And then Birch as well. In the next episode, hopefully Birch is going to be able to make his way straight over to his son over here so that they can and, um, at least find a place to stay together, even though Pine has so much trouble moving around. And of course, way back here, we have the death of Dewdrop. Oh, this is so sad. It is definitely the end of an era, though at least he managed to spend his very final days with his family. They were all gathered around him and they all shared all of their berries together right next to the very same healing fruit which um, saved his mate. So I'm sure he lived a very, very happy life right to the end. But in the next episode, there will definitely be quite a bit of moving around because um, not only do we have Van Keer making his great journey across the sands to see what else he can find in this big wide world, but I'm also feeling like uh, Pearl might be interested in journeying out to see what else is out there too because she does like the river by her home, but I feel like after hearing all of the stories that Dewdrop told, she would be very interested in finding out what else she could accomplish by the the ocean. But we'll focus on all of that in the next episode, so for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!